and welcome to the Angerati studio at European Utility Week 2016. This is Carol Stimmel, and in the studio today I have Oliver Iltisberger, who is the EVP of EMEA for Landis and Gear. I want to thank you for joining us Thanks, uh, very Carol. much. Thank you. Um, so I'm actually going to jump right in. So the, you know, Landis and Gear has been around for a long time getting smart meters in the ground. And one of the unique things about European utilities is that you have utilities at really very different stages of the game. We have utilities that put smart meters in quite a long time ago. And we have other utilities that seem to be still weighing their options, looking at cost benefit cases. And I'm wondering, what is, what is your take on this situation? Yeah, I mean, first of all, Carol, um, I mean, the take on the situation is that no rollout in Europe is, is like another one. Yeah. So they're all okay. different, uh, and you mentioned it already. Uh, you obviously get the utilities that started their first wave deployments maybe 10, 15 years ago, like in Sweden and Italy, mm -hmm. and they're now planning for the second wave. Uh, you get the big uh, countries uh, at the moment, like UK, France, and Spain, for example, that are in the middle of a full rollout uh, of smart right. metering. And then you get uh, countries like Germany that have just sort of passed the regulation that will put in place a smart meter rollout that will last sort of between 2017 and 2032 uh, as per the current plans. So quite a diverse picture in terms of the timing of the rollouts, uh, but also quite honestly in terms of the technologies uh, and the use cases that are being applied. Well, I, I mean, it's, it, it, it's an interesting thing. So I've been, um, you know, doing research and analysis in the energy business for quite a while now. And at the beginning, one of the hard things to sort of express was as we go digital with whether you're putting smart meters in or trying to do some uh, sensing, more sensing in the, in the grid itself, is your, your business case is going to change. In 10 or 15 years, you're going to be needing to upgrade your digital technology, unlike other more uh, traditional assets on the grid that can really you know, last 20 years. So I've seen things out in places that lasted 80 years. I mean, you know, not, not here on the continent, but so I think it's been a bit of a shock. Uh, do you find that or, or is that as, as uh, utilities are starting to develop business cases, are they, have, they, have they built that, that digitization change into their models? I think it is a bit of a shock in fact to, for some uh, yeah. because it comes at a very fast high pace as, yeah. you, as you mentioned. Uh, and there's so much technology evolution happening in the uh, you know, ICT trends that are coming in, but also energy trends uh, mm -hmm. at the same time. And uh, you know, put yourself in the shoes of utilities where maybe that level of innovation has not been uh, at the same speed in the past, uh, and now it seems to be happening all at the same time. Uh, so we're seeing on the one hand uh, the, the regulation that comes in place that actually mandates in many cases smart metering. Uh, so the technology is there right. to provide data, right. uh, but then you get uh, the big uh, ICT trends that are coming uh, in, like you know cybersecurity, for example, uh, mesh connectivity uh, that's been there, IT, OT convergence, uh, and at the same time, energy trends like uh, an uptake of renewables integration into the system, or also you know smarter storage solutions that become available. So a lot of technology that's being provided, uh, that's available, also mandated uh, to some extent. Uh, and that, of course, means that for utilities that there uh, you know, is a question around the future uh, utility business model and what to do actually with all the data and information that becomes available uh, when the grid uh, gets smarter. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a, a big topic well, that's where quite utilities a spending a lot of time. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we, always, we always talk about always, you know, before you make a huge investment in technology, understand where your return on investment is going to be, and that means aligning it with the business case. And, you know, traditionally you, you expect a company to show up with a business case and then fit the technology to it. And the, the unique thing about smart meters is some of the, there were there were solid use cases, but when they put the technology in, all of a sudden, new things came to light. New things were happening. I'm wondering for these, uh, I guess you would call them the first wave, the first uh, who are they're in, they're now moving to their second wave. Yeah. Is what I mean to say. Yeah. So now they've had the meters for 10 or 15 years. They're looking at another round of implementation. What do you see um, as kind of the new drivers? What are the new things that uh, utilities are seeing enabled by smart meters? Yeah, I mean, look, the first wave of smart meters were really very much about meeting sort of the regulatory minimum standard that needed to be uh, put in place. Uh, and it was more or less automatic, uh, you know, advanced meter reading uh, in, in many cases without really using a lot more of the data that would be provided by, by, by smart meters. Right. Uh, today, utilities would look at the uh, entire grid 
uh, would look at, uh, you know, obviously uh, utilizing the data that comes from smart meters, the right. control functions that come from there, but also adding other uh, sensors maybe in the grid that will allow them to collect uh, data from various parts of the grid, uh, then add uh, sort of advanced uh, applications, uh, advanced grid analytics applications, metadata management systems to it, in order to be able to actually manage the huge amount of data that comes with that. So that again uh, opens up opportunities uh, for utilities to improve network efficiency, uh, mm -hmm. to inf uh, also uh, offer additional services uh, that can then be utilized, for example, to end consumers, uh, and it allows them to, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good way, uh, integrate the renewables into their system uh, and managing sort of the challenges uh, that, that come with that. Yeah, so it's, it is really different. I mean, in the in the beginning, it was about it was about innovation, then sustaining innovation. But what's really happening is now we are seeing uh, disruptive innovation um, it, it, through our distributed grid, uh, consumers who are becoming generators, and so. In, you know, when I first started speaking to people like Landis and Gear about saying, "What do you see in the next?" Um, five years, that actually was a question that could be easily answered. I think now there's a lot, because of this disruption, that's a much more interesting question. Mm -hmm. And so I want to ask you, what do you see coming it, from where you sit um, in the in the market, but also uh, how Landis and Gear is going to play into the market in the next five yeah. years? No, that's a good question. I mean, first of all, how do I see the market in the next five years? I see those two trends uh, mm -hmm. that will play a major role. On the one side, the energy trends, uh, the renewables that, uh, that obviously get, uh, need to get integrated, the, the storage solutions that become more and more important um, in there. And on the other side, the, the, the ICT trends that will play uh, a major role. And I think both are really important for utilities today, uh, looking at the, the, you know, to some extent the threat that comes with those, because mm -hmm. obviously there is a, uh, it's going to be a different market design, uh, also partially driven by regulation, right. by the new energy strategy, uh, that's being put in place, the 2030 energy strategy in the European Union, um, will will mean that utilities have to rethink their own business model. Uh, and then the question is, of course, you know, how do utilities, how much time the utilities can spend on actually also managing the complexity that comes with the different technologies, and how much do they rely on the suppliers, uh, on the industry, uh, to actually innovate uh, at the same speed exactly. that is required. And I think yeah. that's where Lannis and Gear can play an important role. Um, obviously, we are serving utilities all around the world uh, since more than 100 years. Uh, but we're also very, very innovative in terms of you know, moving ahead uh, sometimes in, in markets, uh, you know, helping utilities first wave rollout of smart metering, but also now the second wave in smart metering technologies, uh, smart grid technologies, data analytics, uh, capabilities that need to be built up. And all those things are things that we can obviously uh, leverage uh, from uh, you know, looking at utilities that have maybe done that already a year or two ago and can leverage that experience to bring it into the markets where uh, regulation is now just being decided and therefore rollouts only starting or the second wave rollout starting. I think right. that's where Lens and Gear can play a role, focusing on the technologies that need to be provided and, uh, and allowing the utilities to actually focus on their business models and on the sort of more customer-centric services that can be deployed on top of those technologies. Uh, I think that's a really important point. So, you know, uh, it traditionally, I may be oversimplifying this, but, you know, utilities are really good project management companies, yeah. right? And now all of a sudden we have this digital grid mm -hmm. and we have uh, smart homes and smart, smart city, real goals and real um, orchestration opportunities uh, real opportunities to move to lower carbon, even zero carbon cities. And, um, you know, we could ask the utilities to become technology companies, and perhaps for some of them that will be the case. But in the utility industry, we've always counted on um, companies like Landis and Gear Technology Companies to show up and let us know what is possible, what we can do. Do you still see that as, as, the, as your role in the utility industry? And, and if so, if you could just, in the last few minutes we have, say a little bit about um, the kind of um, capabilities that you, you see coming from Landis and Gear to, to address this yeah. energy revolution. Yeah. Carol, I actually think the role becomes even more important uh, compared to the past, because in a sense, today, because of the innovation and the speed that is happening, and because also of the the regulatory change that we see that that, uh, that, that, that that drives to some extent technology evolution as well. I think it becomes even more important for companies like us to actually collaborate very closely with our customers in the early definition of 
you know, what those future technologies uh, might need to look like. Right. So one of the things that we do actually with our entire portfolio, whether it's meters or grid centers or analytics software or even services that we offer, is that we look at them as how do we make them future proof? Uh, quite often today, right, really the industry, point. utilities, yeah. and quite, quite honestly, even all the suppliers to some extent, do not know yet what will be in seven years, nine years, 10 years available. But some of the technology that we're rolling out needs to last for 15 or 20 years. Uh, and therefore, we're thinking through how we can actually uh, you know, define and specify and then develop uh, our hardware and software and services technologies in a sense that uh, you know, it allows us to later on upgrade uh, and to grow uh, sort of the mm -hmm. network, the grid that's being deployed with utilities. And I think that's really what's, what's important uh, because uh, as you said correctly, I mean, it's very hard to foresee uh, what that technology innovation and change will still look like in the next sort of 10 years. And therefore having a technology basis that uh, right. can be upgraded and can be made future-proof is very important. And that's well, what we see as our yeah. role as well. And the relationships. I mean, Landis and Gear has been around a long time, but what a, what a great time to be in this yeah. business. So I, I really appreciate you coming in and uh, sharing with us a little bit about uh, what is happening in, uh, with your company. So thank you so much, Oliver. Thank you very much, yeah. Carol.